Salam alaikum. My name is Gina. I have been a Muslim since October 2021. Gina, tell us a little bit about you before Islam. What was your faith and um, what was your occupation? Sure. So before I accepted Islam, I was uh, a Christian. I was a member of the Seven Day Adventist Church. Um, I had been in that church for most of my life, went through university and worked within the school system. Just before I accepted Islam, I was working for a school in that system as well as a primary teacher. Tell us a bit about Gina in her teenage years. Gina in her teenage years was rebellious, pushing boundaries. To be honest, like I grew up on the entrance on the Central Coast, so you would find me at the beach most weekends, probably find me at the skate park with friends, uh, herning through Terrigal, doing the typical teenager thing. I didn't really have like a faith background to really cement my morals or values in. So I think perhaps I was acting out like just trying to find something to fill that void, whatever I was feeling, but you know, I had a great family and great friend support but I definitely pushed boundaries and limits. <laughs> and at what stage in your life did you realise that you need to fill that void? Probably when I was around 19 or 20, uh, having finished school and all of a sudden, you know, you become an adult and you need to start thinking for yourself, uh, start thinking, you know, what's your goal in life? What do you want to be? What do you want to achieve? And making sure that what you want to do in life is respectable and, you know, you want to bring honour back to your family because they raised you. So I think as we're in 1920, I decided to think, okay, what is the big picture in life and how do I fit into this universe? So that's really started leading me towards um, some answers, trying to figure out who I am. Okay, honestly, it's just been such a long time trying to figure out my identity. And did you investigate other faiths? Before Islam? Yes. So before Islam, I was a Christian. Um, I really cemented myself in that church. I tried my best to, you know, be a good um, Christian, attended services regularly. I really immersed myself in that church system for many years. Uh, actually, from when I was like 16 or 17 years of age, just before I accepted Islam. That did help uh, answer some of the questions I have and did help me with my identity, but it just led to further questions. And the more questions you have, the more investigated, you just start to see little chasms that that's not really fulfilling what it is I'm searching for. And when were you first introduced to Islam? Uh, back in 2013 with my Christian university, I actually went to the Middle East and I toured parts of the Middle East and I got to see the culture there, meet some of the people. Um, I got introduced to mosques and I was just like, these buildings are stunning. So I started asking questions like, what are these buildings for? Is mosque like church in Arabic? I honestly had no idea. And then someone said, no, this is like for Islam. And I was like, oh, what's Islam? And they're like, how do you not know? And I was like, I'm sorry, I don't know. So uh, I started like researching Islam and I learned that it's uh, then after Christianity came the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then I was like, okay, let's start investigating it. Let's start asking these questions. So all the way back in 2013 um, in the Blue Mosque in Turkey, that's when I started asking some serious questions. So between then and between the time that you accepted Islam, what was the uh, pivotal point? Pivotal point, 2017, I moved to Sydney. I got a full-time job, so I decided to move here to be a lot closer so I didn't have to commute for, you know, every single day, essentially. Um, I started meeting new friends, like I joined some online groups to meet new friends, and they eventually I'd come across that there would be Muslim, and it's just like, okay, everywhere I look, I'm surrounded by Islam. Um, a big event for me was the Ramadan night markets at... Lekemba, I just went with some friends and really got to see how the whole community comes together to break their fast and really support each other. And I said, this is for me, this is completely surreal. This really shouldn't happen here, but it did. And I was like, oh, Islam is truly beautiful. And talk us through the day when you accepted Islam. Sure. So uh, I actually left my former place of employment and started working at an Islamic school. And I just wanted to see how does Islam work like everyday life? And one day I was asking my grade leader quite a lot of questions and she just turned around. And she said, are you interested? I said, you know, I think I am. Like, I truly think I'm very interested. And she's like, would you like to take your shahada? I was like, oh, 
okay, like, do I need to go somewhere? Do I need to fill out a form? And she's like, no, we can say it right here. So one day after school, I went into my grade leader's classroom and I said my shahada. And since then, it's just been amazing. Did you get the support from family and friends around it? Yes. So my family has been so supportive the whole time. Um, they, of course, asked questions because it was quite new to them and I tried to answer as best as I could. I had um, my work colleagues, so they're happy to speak with my family as well if they had any questions. My friends have been very supportive. There are, of course, some friends that um, have stopped being so friendly towards me. Um, but in saying that, what I've lost, Allah has given me in return abundantly. And the new friendships I've made, I know I'm going to have them for the rest of my life. What's your favorite verse in the Quran? Uh, my favorite verse in the Quran, it speaks about Allah's mercy. So as long as you're truly apologetic, he's going to give you so much mercy, so much for repentance. As long as you're willing to repent, he's going to forgive you. And to me, I feel like that encompasses everything that Islam is. Like truly everything's there. We have such a forgiving creator. We just need to seek that forgiveness. And if you had one message to any non-Muslims out there that might be considering Islam? I encourage them to look into it. Like we live in this wonderful age where we can go on so many social medias, we can reach out to wonderful organizations and we have this access to knowledge. And it's like, why not? If you have a question, go there, go get the answer. You never know what you're going to miss out on and you need to have this pure connection with your creator you mentioned that there was questions in the past that you couldn't get answers for mm. have you got all the answers now i believe i do the more i'm becoming more i'm now at this stage where i'm trying to find out more about my religion for myself and i do have questions but everyone's easily able to read directly to a hadith or to the quran and i have these answers straight away like i don't have to read in between the lines that they're written factually Tell us about the first day you decided to put on the hijab. Actually, I can remember very well. It was February 15. I just woke up one day and I'm like, I think I'm going to wear my hijab outside to go shopping. I did it. No one looked at me. No one treated me differently. So then I decided to do it the next day. I think the biggest step for me was deciding to wear the hijab around my family. I drove it to my family's house. Um, they saw me with it. They didn't say a single thing about it. They never said, what is that on your head? Why are you wearing it? They just said, okay, like, what do you want for dinner? Like it was, for me, my family has just been so supportive and they love it. Has anybody around you accepted Islam since? Um, I have a few friends that are interested in it and I'm actually so excited for them and I just can't wait for them to say their shahada. I have met some friends through some new Muslim groups and I've been able to witness them saying their shahada and it's truly so beautiful to see, like just to know that that person is now a Muslim. It's, uh, it's just so beautiful. And if you had one dua to ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what would it be? I think it's just to encourage everyone to really think for themselves, have a look into Islam research it and just see how beautiful it truly is and in their own time when they're ready to embrace it was there ever a hard moment was there ever a moment where you were by yourself i think in all honesty it was me more worrying how others would accept me and once i decided to change that narrative everything did become a lot easier i stopped worrying about others how others would perceive me it was more of i need to be who i am who i know i am and once i made that decision I feel the hardships, whatever they were, even if they were trivial, just ceased to exist. What's the hardest part about being a Muslim? I don't know. I, for me personally, I don't think there is a hard thing about being a Muslim. If there was a hard thing, I think it's just being aware that as a Muslim, especially as a scarfed woman, I do represent my religion, so I need to be mindful I don't get quick to anger. I try not to have road rage. So I think if any, there was a hardship for being a Muslim, that would be it. But you know, honestly, in the big scheme of things, that's not a hard thing to bear. What's your response to anybody who says that Muslim women are oppressed? I ask them and I'm like, how am I oppressed? Please tell me. 
because as a Muslim woman, I feel I have so much more freedom. Um, you know, I like to remind them that in Islam, the person that really helped our prophet was a woman. The uh, person who first came up with university was a woman. And in Islam, women, we are so safeguarded. If we were to be disrespected, that's actually a really big issue. So am I oppressed? No, absolutely not. Do you regret what you did? Becoming a Muslim? No, never. I think for me, Islam is the uh, one thing I'm 100% sure I'll never regret it. 